All right, I'm at the Hilda L. Solis River Overlook. Uh, and I'm gonna do a really short, light jog along the San Gabriel River Trail, uh, and then a little bit of hiking, and then kind of sprint back. Uh, so yeah, most of this is gonna be filmed on the way there. <laughs> okay, so this is some of the, the Dudleya, right? And what you end up seeing sometimes uh, along these outcrops on the San Gabriel River Trail is uh, some of this Dudleya that's native to the San Gabriel Mountains uh, along the hill slopes. Now, you know, there's some there, some there. It's pretty prevalent, especially early on, but uh, yeah. So this is like pretty close to the entrance, uh, but there's this little spring coming out. and. Uh, I usually come here to do short runs uh, when I'm trying to for something long or I'm just kind of trying to relax. And uh, that spring flows even in the dry season. Here's another pretty magical view of the river. <laughs> San Gabriel River. Uh, that's the 39, I think. Yeah, I keep going down. Okay, I'm standing on this platform. You get this really nice uh, view of the river, or maybe it's a bridge, not quite a platform. But yeah, you know, just right off the side of the road, by a road that I was jogging on. And I think it's pretty, pretty magnificent. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going up that way. Okay, this is where that fire road slash road turns into a trail, short trail more or less. Uh, and there's some neat stuff out here. Some I have explored, some I haven't. One thing that I wanted to check out is that old road scar, whatever that is up there. Okay, this is another uh, beautiful part of this trail that I love. Uh, where this tree sort of hangs over the river as it uh, kind of widens out and slows down. So technically you're not supposed to go in the water here. And one of the reasons I think behind that is uh, just a little upstream, you got the, the Morris Reservoir, Morris Dam, something like that and uh, they control the discharge. So if they decide on um, letting a bunch of water out, all of a sudden you might get swept away. So this is, uh, in my opinion, a really wonderful spot. You know, every time I come here, just look this way, right? The, the trees, you know, above, uh, and the way that they sort of scatter the light across the river, uh, and you know, the white waters here, how it really, uh, really is reflective of the sun. It's just really beautiful. All right, I don't really know what this is. Um, my guess is it's some sort of fig maybe though, if I can get that in focus. I think it's a native tree, but there's a bunch of non-native trees here, or plant, <laughs> shrub. Uh, there's a castor bean right here, which I know isn't edible. Uh, and uh, some wild cucumber, some other stuff, you know. Uh, I don't think you can eat wild cucumber, but maybe you can and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, if... Uh, I try to look this up, whatever it is, and if it's edible, I might come back here and uh, have a taste, you know? Who knows? Okay, so just walking up here and uh, found like a little vein of quartz in this rock. Looks like it's hydrothermal potentially. And as I mentioned, I think earlier in the video, uh, somewhere up here, there's an old road and uh, obviously a bunch of landslide deposits. So it might be worth uh, poking around and these hill slopes for some more hydrothermal minerals. I mean, quartz isn't all that rare, but if there was a mining operation here at some point, I'd like to know. Okay, so I'm right at the river cane and there's a little landslide deposit here, which is neat, you know, and uh, just looking at the rocks, kind of slowly going along. You get a lot of this, uh, let me see if I can get a good view there. Yeah, you, you know, there's some copper carbonate, I think some of this, uh, blue green stuff it's not algae it's a mineral you know uh so you can find copper carbonate in a lot of spots but just given like how hydrothermally altered some of these rocks are here you know uh, whatnot and there is going to be some infrastructure in a second let me take you to that uh, okay there's that silo i was talking about uh i'm just gonna get up in there through the bush to show you all around it is, you know, this is maybe like two miles away from where I parked. Not too far, but considerably overgrown. Uh, and yeah, it kind of goes to show what you can find if you're just, uh, you don't have a lot of time on your hands. You're just kind of be adventurous, you know, so. Looks like it's crushed. 
not much in there, as far as I can tell with the camera. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so you get some pretty nice uh, views here. Uh, this is uh, maybe about two miles away from uh, where I parked on a relatively popular trail, you know, that uh, short San Gabriel River Trail. But you get beautiful areas like this and all that cool infrastructure we saw back there that's, uh, I mean, maybe even demolished by the landslides to some extent, but still pretty neat. Uh, so it shows you what you can find if you just go a little further than most people do. Uh, there are plenty of areas that make sense to turn around back there and it's still a cool trail. But I think this is a magical spot, so uh, yeah. So there is a crossing nearby and I just kind of went over here and uh, you can see in some of these areas you get a lot of these we need uh, freshwater clam shells, I think, uh, from the Morris Reservoir. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just upstream that ways a little bit. So it's good stuff. Wow, all right. So I've seen a lot of uh, prickly pear fruit, you know, growing next to each other. You know, these. Ah. <laughs> but these ones have kind of fused together and they sort of make a heart. So that's pretty cool. So I mentioned some of the hydrothermal activity that I saw, you know, at least the record of it in some of the rocks, and I showed y'all some copper carbonate. But some of these textures here are pretty crazy. I didn't really bring any hydrochloric acid or anything with me, but I'm not sure if it's like quartz or maybe carbonate. Uh, I think it's probably carbonate, but uh, something like that. Maybe some zeolite, I don't really know. Uh, nonetheless, it's uh, pretty interesting. So there is a road going down to the Morris Reservoir this way. And there's sort of a trail, it does keep going. And uh, it's not real well maintained, uh, but I think that by the time you reach that road, you're not supposed to go any further. The property lines, if there are property lines, really aren't obvious. And uh, there's a public trail this way that does continue. So it's a little, little funny, more or less, but uh, yeah, if you're gonna go out this way, I wouldn't uh, go, to, go past that road. Um, I'll show you where I like to turn around. All right, so here you got this big uh, section of river could probably swim in theoretically you're not supposed to uh but yeah it looks like a something you could do laps in if you wanted <laughs> it was allowed <coughs> sorry a little, little congested uh yeah i think it makes sense to turn around here you know uh, around this area you do get some telephone lines kind of right over there uh but i think the kind of general premise is you're not supposed to get too close to the dam it's uh you know, that's that's kind of the way they you know dams like to operate just for safety reasons uh so if you get to around here maybe i'll go a little further if you turn around um and to be honest if they're if i'm not supposed to be here they should make that clear it is not clear at all there are no signs there's no real line uh so yeah i think this is a nice spot to turn around so a lot of this here, I think, is uh, dead poison oak, you know. And uh, you can kind of pass around there if you really wanted to. But yeah, just, just a little ahead, there are some electrical lines. And my guess is that's where the, uh, you know, where you shouldn't pass. <laughs> uh, there's more Dudleya here, actually, right? So it's, uh, when you get to the mouth of the canyon, you get a lot of it, and then it kind of dies down, but then you see you got Dudleya here, you got Dudleya here, some Dudleya up there in a few spots. Maybe I can point to it. <laughs> I'm holding some things. But you know, there, there, there. So yeah, I might get a few pictures here of the Dudleya because I just got video last time. And then uh, turn around. Yeah, make my way back. I'm gonna sprint when I get to the road, so. Won't get much on the road on the way back, but yeah, maybe I'll get some more. You can see this can really hold onto the canyon walls. <laughs> it's not much uh, soil. A little crack in the crack in the rock, maybe some soil above. A little vegetation down for you. But uh, yeah, you know, a little bit of grass, but not much else going on this, growing on this rock face. So good stuff. So there are other neat little succulents that are not deadly, but are pretty beautiful too. Uh, normally they grow on the hill slopes. You can see some Dudley on the hill slopes up there and there, you know. But uh, yeah, these guys are growing down here right now for some reason. So yeah. Okay, so I'm uh, a little beneath that road-like structure. And I've always kind of passed it by, but I think I might just do a little scramble up there this time. Uh, I think the whatever landslide happened made that look easy. So 
Maybe it was easy before, I just never paid attention, but here we go. Just starting to make my way up and a little bit of rebar. So I'm not too far up yet, but I'm pretty close. So need to see. All right, here we are. It's a structure up in the mountains. Seems to have been abandoned, you know, due to time. Uh, but it's still up here, you know, preserving what I think is part of a road. I think I could make it up around there, but I'm going to decide not to. You know, one of the reasons I'm able to keep doing stuff like this, my decisions, which normally wouldn't include scrambling up a, you know, rock slide, landslide deposit with a bunch of uh, loose rock. <laughs> Might be able to see there's another hiker down there, so I'm not the only one. Maybe they can hear me, you know, right about there. But uh, yeah, no, this is great. Uh, don't try this, to be honest. Uh, I uh, instinctively, I think I have a very good intuition of how to move up these for whatever reason. But you have to be careful because, you know, you loosen something from below, you'll get uh, crushed. And as you're going down, you might loosen things from above and uh, get crushed, you know, and so, yeah, be careful if you do something like this. I'm going to head back down and there's another hiker. Hi, they're waving at me. I don't know who it is, but yeah, I think that person, I'm really hoping they don't come up because it would be very dangerous if they do. Uh, <laughs> hope they just keep going. Yeah. But uh, yeah, all right, look at that. Okay, I'm back at the vehicle. Uh, when I was going down, I was, uh, yeah, everything was real steady. Uh, until the very end where I did hurt myself a little bit uh, Not a whole ton, but it was bleeding a lot more uh, Fortunately the person at the base of the hill as I was going down was a registered nurse and she gave me a Band-aid and an extra band-aid. Uh, so I'm gonna clean this up. Uh, thank you. I forget your name uh, I'm not sure if I asked but uh, I know you have a photograph of me up there and I gave you my email and phone I think so there's a chance I'll get a, you know, an image of me up in a very sketchy place uh, from a registered nurse, so that'd be great. But uh, yeah, all right, that's the video for you.